Hey gang, we're back with another video for you today. Uh, this is uh, part three of our very long form nerdy videos. Mm -hmm. And I think the consensus was that we would do a Sheepra video focusing on the style of perfumery dating back to the early 1900s called Sheepra. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out about Sheepras with Dana, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning in and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Hello. I missed you. <laughs> How are you doing? This is a fun time to do this. I'm just getting away from my family for a little bit. Um, and I'm really excited to do the Sheep because it's uh, one of my favorite styles in perfumery, but it, it's I've only recently started to be able to wear it properly. Mm. I think it takes a particular type of nose exercise, age, skin, who knows. Um, but ladies of a certain age <laughs> are now enjoying Sheep more. So then yeah. you didn't used to wear the style of perfumery back Correct. in the day? Correct. It was too much for my nose. And I think there's so hmm. much, uh, so many more um, easy uh, categories and perfumeries to explore that feel more manageable. That cheaper always kind of ends up um, closer to you know one's. 30s, I would say, from what I've noticed. Also, because it's very, very strong and because it's very, very stable, um, people of third age, for example, sometimes prefer it because they can smell it better and because um, they can smell it better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's. I think it's been associated with the older people uh, for too long, and I'm very, very happy to see that I didn't have to wait until my 70s to be able to wear it. I love it. I think it's great. Personally, people think that cheapers and fougeres are similar. These are questions I get asked on the channel all the time, mm -hmm. and people are very, very curious to learn about the style. And I was not very familiar with it either. I've always known about Cody's uh, Shepra, mm -hmm. which came out in the early 1900s. 1919. And so, probably that's the start of the Shepra style of perfumery, I'm assuming. Well, um, that's the first official Western, uh, you know, uh, whatever, the popular fragrance. Although, before Coty, you know, Coty and Guerlain had this kind of rivalry. Uh, it happened with Emeraud and Chalimar back in the 20s, the mm -hmm. beginning of the 20s as well. They kept inspiring each other, and the wife of Coty was very, very much... Um, oh, the wife of Guerlain was very much in love with, with Monsieur Coty's work. So that kind of uh, put fire under their asses, just to put it lightly. So they kind of kept copying each other. In this case, it wasn't Coty who came up with a winning formula first, like he did with Emerald, which was then copied by Chalima. But uh -huh. it was Guerlain who came out with um, something called Chypre de Paris in 1909. However... Um, that long? That long. And then um, they changed it to Chypre. I'm not sure if they changed the formula as well, but it was first Guerlain who came up with an official modern, western style, studied, hmm. um, high perfumery Chypre. Um, but there have been mentions of this combination that makes the Chypre, and we're going to go into it uh, in a minute. Um, they've been mentioned of this kind of accord in perfumery since the 17th century, and um, some historians of perfumery believe that there have been mentions of this particular type of combination with a, a, a citrus, a resin, an oak moss, or a tree moss, since the Roman times, which would explain the mm. relationship with Cyprus, because I think you were asking, or you were telling me... Um, which I'm going to ask on, right. in a bit, but um, before we move forward, uh, what about Coty? Do they make perfumes anymore, or are they just a distributor? Oh, absolutely. They, they still do? They still make perfumes. Their... I, don't, I don't know what the last one that they came out with was, or under what umbrella, but they're still very much in production. Because Coty still... is a distributor now. They distribute Gucci, they distribute... Uh, Bottega Veneta, Calvin Klein, I know you have Burberry, a bunch of stuff. all yeah. of these brands. So but they're still so produced. I mean, Emerald is still being produced under Coty. Under Coty. Okay. For example, can I mean, you buy Chypre from Coty? Is it not? I don't think they make that one anymore. Okay. And this is for a variety of reasons that we're going to get into a little bit later. Are you noticing that I'm being very, very like serious and? Yeah. Where's your like? Animation. 
this is a very serious business for me. <laughs> we're going to rip topic? some ass later, but we're not talking about hemorrhoids. No hemorrhoids <laughs> today. Okay. You know why not? Why not? Because your watchers come and haunt me and start talking about my vulva and my private parts. What? Yes. Sexual whatever is called. Okay, guys. Leave her alone. Okay? So no talking about my ass or hemorrhoids and stuff. Okay. Back to being very serious. This is serious business. <laughs> but somebody actually more than one person, um, noticed very accurately that when I get excited, I get very loud. And So are you excited about sheepers? I'm very excited in my head. Okay. So I'm trying to be very composed right now. All right. Don't jinx it. So I'm going to ask you the first question. Do not jinx it. Yes. Where does the word sheepra come from? Sheepra, uh, pronounced sheep. Sheep, ra. Ra. Um, it's the French term for the island of Cyprus. I don't know why they picked this to denominate and describe this kind of style of perfumery. I have no idea. Cyprus doesn't have any connection you know, I've necessarily. Been there. As a little kid. Really? Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's a beautiful island. Um, I the think Greek side. the overlap, of course. <laughs> They're both fine, dude. It's the same <laughs> island. Haiti and the Dominican Republic are on the same island as well. It's the same island. Just putting it out there. Um, it is. You're right. I think the overlap with Cyprus and Chypre, um, apart from the French who named a lot of things at the beginning of the last century, are two. One is this Roman thing, this Roman myth that I keep hearing amongst uh, historians of perfumery, uh, who say that this combination of elements that now are known as a Chypre accord have been mentioned in historical texts since Roman times. Roman times with the Mediterranean basin, we all know what happened mm -hmm. up until a lot happened. A lot happened. The second overlap would be that Chypre contains one ingredient that is mainly found in the Mediterranean basin and um, has been long, uh, long picked and enjoyed and used for variety. Of is that the labdanum? That is the labdanum. Sister's labdanum. We've talked about, if you haven't seen the video, go watch Definitely that video. Definitely check that video. Because it explains a lot about what it is, how it's grown, how it's picked with the goats and all of that fun stuff is in that video. <laughs> so um, <laughs> these are the two points of overlap between Sheep as, a, as an accord in perfumery or a style in perfumery nowadays, and the island of Cyprus. Has nothing to do with Cyprus the tree. trees? No, a lot of people thought, think it, uh, it does. No. But it, you do say the same, is it the same word for Cyprus in French? Uh, sheep? Sheep. That it, is not correct. the island, but the, the tree. Correct. Another thing, so that's overlap number three, I just thought about it. The oldest known vestigial perfumery today, the, on, the oldest physical location for perfumery that we know of today was discovered in the island of Cyprus. It's, it's about three to four thousand years, 3,300 years old, so it's very, very old. You can still visit it. The ruins are there. The mixing, the, the pot, really? the pottery parts. You can go see this. You can see this. It's, it's there. So, uh, is it in Cyprus? It is in Cyprus. Wow. Must go. So maybe... Yeah, sure. All right. We're going to so, leave our partners home. <laughs> All right. So most people yeah. think sheepers are named after the cypress tree, which we've covered already. So styles of sheepers, are there like multiple different styles? Is it always focusing on uh, the notes of um, bergamot in the top, cystus slapdanum in the heart, and oak moss in the base? And there's also patchouli that comes in typically. Um, so the definition is... Bergamot, some would say citrus, but it's usually bergamot on top, labdanum, for sure, oak moss, or tree moss, for sure. These three, without them, we can't have a cheap. Nowadays, because of some issues with somebody we don't like, or trust, actually trust. <laughs> can you name who that is? Yeah, of course I can. It's Ephra. We've, <laughs> we've been talking about Ephra. Uh, we'll talk about Ephra a lot. Should I make this face every time I talk about Ephra? Uh, no, I won't make this face every time I talk about Ephra, but we don't trust Ephra for a variety of reasons. Um, although I agree it has its own, you know, reserved role, but because of them and because of the regulations, some of these have been replaced with, uh, with particular mixes that kind of mimic um, usually oak moss. But, um, patchouli... So it's synthetic? We'll get there. Okay. 
Patchouli and rose are not necessarily part of Shepra, but by practice, because they mix really, really well, usually um, you find at least a little bit of, do you know, a, a small dose of either or. Um, and patchouli nowadays, in co combination with vetiver, which as far as I know can't easily be reproduced in a lab, mm. so it has to be somewhat, you know, in some portion natural, Th these two in combination sometimes replace oak moss altogether. So your, you know, your nose knows. <laughs> and, uh, I thought you were the nose nose. I am the nose nose, but your nose <laughs> nose and picks up the patchouli very accurately because a lot of, a lot of the modern, modern shippers are built using different kinds of combination to replace the oak moss. So, um, depending on what you put next to these three main ingredients, um, you can veer sheep to be this or that. So if you mix it with like super fruity fruits, it's a fruity sheep. If you put some irisy, violety, castrelmi, safralines, whatever, something, it's going to be a leathery. Oh, oh leather. It can be towards leather. If you add indoles and whatever, or whatever, it can be floral, or maybe some of the green flowers like Lily of the Valley, these mix very well. Um, you can put galbanum and then it's like a super bitter green, you green know, sheep green sheep and so on. So you can steer the you can go in the, different directions. the same way as you can do with, uh, you know, anything really. What about something like, you mentioned rose, could mm -hmm. be uh, like the patchouli, you would add it mm -hmm. and complements it. But uh, the cystus labdanum is typically known for rock rose. We want to make sure they know that rock rose and rose are completely different. They're completely different. Rock rose looks like almost like a succulent if you live in in areas where succulents grow they're like those plants with like fat leaves like aloe for example you cut it so it's like wet inside and they're fat they accumulate water the flower grows on a long stem that looks kind of weird and naked and the flower itself looks like a poppy almost you know those papery kind of yeah. um, petals poppies. Um, the rock rose usually is white or off-white. Sometimes it has an, like a darker uh, center and they're called <laughs> the, the brown-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very dirty name for brown -eyed. it. Brown-eyed. Brown-eyed brown <laughs> rose, but it's not in the rose family at all. Nothing. It has nothing to do with rose. And when you smell it, it's kind of like um, the flower itself. It's not... I'm getting it. I'm drooling. I don't know why. Um, the flower itself uh, smells slightly honey-esque and slightly resiny. From the labdanum plant, go watch the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This she had real labdanum. Yes. Yeah, Sticky, molasses-y, gunky thing. It was smelled really smoky. It looks like one of those like epilating, like you, the, no. when you when you take your the sugar thing that the ladies stuff, use to to do wax yeah. your legs. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. You can you can stick myself to the wall. It's so like anyway. So that's uh, that's the love down. It has nothing to do with no. Uh, one the more thing before we move on. You mm -hmm. mentioned you mentioned that the patchouli. Well, we mentioned patchouli. Somehow I f have a feeling that patchouli and oak moss kind of like have similarities as far as smells go is that true i mean do they to you somewhat yeah they smell do they substitute they smell? one over the other because oak moss is now very very controlled by ifra correct can they like add more uh, oak moss i mean uh, uh, add more patchouli to uh, to take the place of the oak moss they or? some some perfumers replace it all together through this mix of patchouli and vetiver um patchouli and oak moss to my nose uh, overlap in flavor because they're both, they smell like green forest, like damp, mm -hmm. a little bit dirt, musty. wet dirt, musty. Um, depending on what kind of tree moss it is, um, it can smell a little bit terpenic, like turpentine, piney. Uh, but essentially it's a green, dark, a little bit damp, very present. It's like you're, you know, sleeping on a bed of, of forest vegetation. Um, European forest, not a jungle, not tropical flowers, it's like just <laughs> a very temperate yeah. <laughs> Canadian, you Specific know, zone. or something, yeah. Um, so they're green smells, uh, they're different kinds of oak moss. The one that we know, both of the, actually all of them are not mosses, first of all, they're lichens. I am a botany nerd, 
there's a difference between a moss, which is a plant, very primitive plant, but it's a plant, and a lichen, which is a combination between a bacteria and an algae, or a fungi and an algae. It's kind of like an alien form of life. Um, it grows on oaks, but um, elsewhere as well. The Latin name is Avernia prunastri, so prune. It grows on plum trees and that really? family pits, you know, it can grow on apricot trees and the, the pity uh, type of trees. And that one is a little bit sweeter, a little bit um, brighter green, if you want. And then there's one called Furfuracea, I think, Avernia furfurea, furfuracea, something like that, that grows only on pines and it's really deep turpentine. Okay thing. Um, so do they specify when they use it in perfumes where it comes from? It, they do and I'll tell you how. Um, after the scandals with Ifra and all these studies that have been contested, I'm one of the people who cry wolf because I, I think some of them have been done too fast and not in a scientific uh, way. I'll get into details if you want. Um, every time I say Ifra, I'm gonna make this face because of that. <laughs> but um, I forgot what you asked me. What did you ask me? <laughs> Patchouli and oak moss. I got excited. I got excited. How similar they are? Are they kind of like do use? Do, 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 yes. do they use patchouli to replace oak moss they nowadays? Do. They do. In collaboration with vetiver, which is also a green and and foresty thing. But I was going to say something else and I forgot. Well. Bef Sorry. When you, if you remember, so now that it's regulated by IFRA, and we'll mm -hmm. get to IFRA further, mm -hmm. what do they use in place of oak moss to make it an oak, oak moss? Mossy. So let's say, for example, Le Labo came out with a mousse. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot what is it called, mousse something. Mousse to, yeah. Um, what are they using in this fragrance to make it smell like oak moss? Is it something completely different? Do they use a tiny amount to, to enough that they can get away with it? But if IFRA is regulating it and making it less and less allowed, well, does that mean they have to go back and reformulate it and remove the yes. quantity yes. and yes. add yes. it with synthetic? Yes. yes. How does this all work? <laughs> <laughs> it's a free for all at this point. IFRA did regulate um, the use of oak moss since 2000. And it was it was legally or legally officially passed in 2014, but since uh, 2015 they've implemented this new limit for oak moss, which is 0.1 percent, which is nothing. Uh, 0.1 percent for all types of tree moss combined. So if you want to use Avenia prunastri in combination with the furfurea, furfuracea, I forget the other, the pine uh, tree moss, which you will see as tree moss sometimes on packagings, together they can't be more than 0.1%. 0.1% is not that much. Um, in the past, for some of the beautiful fragrances that we came to love and know people for, from the 60s and 50s even, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, they used way more than that because one, it's a fixative, oak moss is a fixative, so even f for, for those who are not looking necessarily for this type of smell, they would use it to keep the formula together um, and keep it, you know, give it more shelf life. Um, but others used it for the particular feeling of forest and green and all of that stuff. Um, so for them, 0.1% is Nothing. murder. Yeah. Murder. Some of them decided to discontinue altogether because they're purists. They don't want their formulas to, you know, be lost. Some of them, like, um, um, Thierry Vasser, Duchaufour, even, uh, they reworked oak moss to extract from the absolute or whatever they have um, the things that cause the allergies. Oh. And those are the things that Ifra made a point about. And in the name of those things. So it's that related cause, to allergies. It's is related why it's to allergy skin. Um, Do people really get contact allergies from oak dermatitis? Um, We'll get into Do you it guys very, get allergies very, from <laughs> very soon. We're going to get into that. Um, so, in the name of those elements, which are atronol and chloroatronol, there are two elements that can cause allergies that are part of the compounds that create, you know, oak moss or tree moss, absolute and perfumery. Um, so, Duchaufou and Vasser found ways that are not very cheap to literally, from the absolute, from that thing that smells. Um, to extract the allergenic parts. Part. What's left still smells like oak moss, but theoretically is safe to use. Some people okay. say it doesn't smell the same exactly, but they're happy that there's still some real tree moss um, or oak moss, um, and some people don't feel the differences. So some perfumers use 
real oak moss absolute without these boo-boo parts. Um, some people reconstruct with patchouli and vetiver, like I said, and yet some, like um, Masque Milano, uh, came out with Kintsugi this, this year, which I thought was a brilliant formula. Um, they came out with, um, with a, a, a composition that instead of oak moss uses um, raspberry leaf, which hadn't been used as the green element in an accord. It works really well, actually. Really? I, I, I thought it does. It does not smell exactly like oak moss, but it does do the job of transmitting the idea of what Chypre uh, is supposed to be, the way we understand it today. So I, like I thought fragrance, I, I, I thought it's very I it's thought nice. it's a very good idea. Yeah. Um, and then there um, there's a, a, there there are chemical compounds as well that can be used. One of them is called Evernil. So if you see Evernil anywhere, you know that that's there as a synthetic uh, replacement for, for oak moss. Okay. Now, um, should we go into allergies and all that fun um, stuff or do you want to go into... Well, before we move on to the next question, I have one more question for you. Okay. So, you said a forest, smells like the forest. Mm -hmm. To me, that typically hints at something very masculine, but I feel like sheepers are very feminine targeted releases, especially in the old days. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about what these smell like and would men be able to wear these? Are they strictly for women? I know they have sheepers for men, especially one of the have most popular... Have you met me? <laughs> I mean, especially one of the most popular sheepers in fragrance community, Aventus, is a, is a sheepra. It's a very modern sheepra. Um, it utilizes oak moss and I fruity think... notes. It's a fruity sheepra. Right. Well, in the past... Like some of the classics. They were the, the, up until very recently, sheepers were released for women. I don't understand why. No idea why. Then again, the gourmand styles, the aquatic styles, which came out later, uh, didn't exist back, back then. So you either had florals, um, and for the longest time, lavender was a woman's thing. For the longest time. I thought it was Bef a men's thing when when Caron Poran. I'm I'm talking oh. about pre pre okay. pre Fougère Royal. So oh. traditionally, rose was a men's flower and lavender was a female wow. flower okay. because I think they they were balancing the hot cold type of thing. And since women are so much inferior and hot blooded and not of <laughs> the mind and the intellect, they need to be tempered and cooled off. Whereas, so lavender does the trick. So lavender did the trick. I don't know why, but you know, this is this is what it was. It was more ethereal, more delicate, whatever. And, and the men rose, needed to be heated up. Men needed to be heated up because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so traditionally, <laughs> these were things. Um, this is how perfumery used to be done, like two hundred years ago. Uh, then modern perfumery happened. Western. Um, cultural, um, uh, you know, marks of what gender is supposed to be were imposed onto perfumery, and we ended up with kind of a switch. It happens with the with the um, colors as well. Pink and red used to be men's colors, Ew. not anymore. I don't like what pink you? personally. <laughs> It used to be what it used to be. Purple was I love the, red, but the color of kings. It used to come from the Murex, hmm. you know, snail. It could not be reproduced chemically, so it had to come from nature. And it was so rare and so expensive that only kings and emperors could use purple for their clothing. Purple wow. was a men's color. So a lot of things have switched over the years. Okay. I'm happy to live in a, in, in a time and place where doesn't really matter where people understand that we're so different that oh, it, it, I perceive stuff differently anyway. We've tested stuff on skin today. It smells different. Yeah. What you get and what I get, and we both agree that our it's chemistry different. is so, so it's different. Like different. So even though we're um, Virgos, even though we're Virgos. Well, that's because I'm much older than you. <laughs> really? You're much older than me. I'm 143 years old. Oh, I'm only 99. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> These kids, you know, they're going to take us seriously, right? Um, no, but for the longest time, you know, things were in reverse. I never understood why women's fragrances 
uh, were so cool and so green and yeah, so fresh green. and so herby and you know all the early Chanel's the 19's all the galbanums the bitterness I, I don't get it uh, but it was what it was women loved it they probably came out at a bitter time in the history of the world <laughs> you know what I was every time I talk about vintages uh, for my Romanian community each of them is kind of connected to something the women's liberation no or well, yes the World War One they finish the, the, the end of World War Two the f great famine of 20 what you know each of them kind of came as a reaction of the times Chanel number no. five came out in the 20s 21 yeah. Roaring 20s you know everything Roaring was sparkling 20s. and shining and, and parties and they were doing the you know I know but they were doing like uh, tobacco stuff they were doing languorous opium me type of things back then and then all of a sudden boom aldehydes to be different so I guess a lot of a lot of uh, the greatest discoveries were not necessarily great in and of themselves mm -hmm. but they filled a niche they filled a gap there was nothing there a need for something new it doesn't matter what that something new is as long as there's something different from what we have available people are gonna yeah. use it and like it so uh, it was uh, marketed as a women's thing for the longest time going in parallel with the fougere which also um, uses oak moss as one of their main three ingredients um, and until recently I think it kind of stayed a woman's thing and it became more and more womanly with the addition of rose and all the other now womanly things uh, until they woke up they realized it's stupid until niche didn't us all a solid and said you know what if you like it use it life's too short for this crap um, no seriously I mean yeah is it for your genitals if it's not doesn't matter what it says on the bottle do you operate it with your genitals? Then it can't be for men, for, for women. If you're a man and you're wearing a woman's perfume, are your genitals going to fall off? If, if you're wondering that, your genitals already fell off, darling. <laughs> like, who cares? Who cares? Anyway, doesn't anyway, matter. Okay. Um, so uh, now they're particularly in niche. Um, they're marketed to both men and women. Um, and I think that created uh, an opening for more creativity because if in the past, since this is for women, you can only mix it with blah, blah, blah. Um, now you can mix it with anything and if you like it, you wear it. If you don't, you don't, then it's marketed to everybody. So there's more variation and cheap, 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 cheap today than it, there used to be, you know, 40 years ago when there were very, very clear delineations of what a sheep has to be and has to stay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's okay. the most popular men's sheeper then that stating back to the old days men's sheeper like endurance? men's targeted that I, I think um chanel pro monsieur is a sheeper would you consider that like uh yeah sure uh, chanel, chanel anteus is also anteus the yes. leathery leathery yes, sheeper yes Yves Saint Laurent had Yves Saint Laurent a, a bunch of yeah, yeah. bunch of good, I think sh solid sheep who that can be worn by both today they're very green citrusy woody fragrances i feel like they're very unisex personally but yeah everything in them is completely unisex uh labdanum is very resiny and goes in really well with everything else and kind of attracts sweeter um other notes it mixes really well with anything really bergamot is there and has always been in a lot of combinations for both men and women so no yeah. matter what you throw at it it's kind of Completely your sex, for sure. Now, one more thing before we move on. I've got a lot of questions for you. I've read a <laughs> lot of places that oak moss goes animalic. I don't understand that because it doesn't go animalic for me. What can you say about the fact that oak moss goes animalic? Does it go animalic? <sighs> if that's, I mean, I can't tell other people what to say. How do you experience oak moss? Depends what it's mixed with. <laughs> because if you it's have a, a lot of vintage perfumes. I have I'm assuming, hundreds I'm, of. I'm assuming they're using editions. real oak moss because they're yes. pre Ifra. Yes. Do any of them go in a malacone? Mm, okay, I think we need to define. This is squeaking under my ass. I know. Okay, sorry. These I'm chairs are going happy. to be replaced very soon. It's okay. I like these. Aww. Pretty soon, uh, new chairs. So, uh, so. Animalic, as in, like, do they go civity? Is it. What is what is that, what do they mean by animalic? Oak well, that's animal that's my question to people who say that would be what do you mean by animalics? By the nature of sheep, because the three elements don't exist on their own. Traditionally, they have been mixed, particularly with civet, which was a more womanly kind of 
you know, ingredient um, back in the day. Civet, woman's ingredient. Back in the day, yes. Mm, okay. um, whereas castrem, for example, would be used more masculine, more masculine and used heavily, probably, in like leathery fragrances and so on. Uh, civet usually was used up until, you know, 10, maybe 20 years ago. Um, mostly in women's fragrances. So in this kind of context, yes, I guess you can you can say that the cheaper fragrances that you smelled back in the day were also smelling slightly animalic. It's probably because there was some other animalic ingredient mm. brought in to complete the formula. But if you only um, smell it directly the way it is, the, 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 either the solvent extraction or the uh, vacuum distilla distillation uh, pro end product because these are the two main uh, methods of extracting um, what we use in perfumery from oak moss and tree moss. Okay. If you smell them on their own, they can be slightly. I keep saying silkworms. If anybody knows. Yeah. How does what do silkworms smell like? Um, what are silkworms? You can tell it's not coming from a plant. You can tell it's something alive. Alive. In, okay. in, in the animal kingdom and not the okay. plant kingdom. Okay. I get it now. Um, it's slightly lactonic, a little bit creamy. Imagine you're eating a worm. A, I don't know <laughs> if you can a pupa of something. A, a a a bee pupa. You know they're they're slightly milky. Pupa. Pupa means is one of the <laughs> phases in the metamorphosis from <laughs> a an egg to a, an adult insect. Okay. All insects go through several stages, you know? So, during the metaphor, why are we talking? Okay, entomology lesson number one. Stuff you never thought you needed. Uh, no, we're just trying to try and find out why they <laughs> say oak moss is animal. I don't know yeah. why. You know, but you I explained can't, it. Well, I can't I, I live it. in somebody else's nose. But if that's what they smell, that's what they smell. Okay. Um, in traditional fragrances, the ones that we kind of keep as standards for Chypre, subcategories in history like bandit that was a leather sheep and it has a lot of castor and a lot of civet in it that's really animal if you put it on you know it, that's big gay uh yeah. bandit um if you look at um you know if you if you if you look at mitsuko right um that one is clearly fruity but it's a it's a sheep so uh, the ones that we retain in our memory as really really good sheep along the history yeah. always had an extra dose of something else that took them out of what most of them were doing and gave them something special something right to new, be remembered yeah. for so that's Kind of what we report our experiences too, but oftentimes shippers are mixed with indoles, those can smell animalic, they're mixed with animalic notes and that kind of, you know, bring out um, the, the, the sharpness of it all. So you, you might, we might perceive it differently based on, um, you know, it, it feels like it amplifies everything else that, that it's around. Sheep, that's why I love shippers, but it's a dangerous uh, category to wear because this is the beast that everybody's talking about the penny droppers and the beast modes <laughs> and the werewolf coming to get you at night does not come from lavender shit and men's freshy fragrances okay it comes from women's fragrances in history come on yeah. like the big booms of the 80s and the huge you know diva fragrances those are beast modes diva ungaro that too, sure, but you know, I don't, I don't put beast in in the f fruity, fresh, aquatic, and fougere categories because they can't be, which is a kind kind of a paradox for 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 fragrance users You're today. You're right. You're absolutely anyway. right. So are sheepers out of style because of the banning of oak moss by Ifra, or are they? Seems like they're coming back in style. I think they are because they're learning how to use uh, oak oak moss, and it's tiniest little amounts with the substitutions, correct? Mm -hmm. I think they're coming back in style because they found new ways to, to, to build them so they don't have to discontinue or they don't have to write it off the table as an impossibility from, from a technical perspective and chemical, chemical you know, <laughs> know-how perspective. Number two, it's not just for women anymore. Um, so well, men is like, whoa, this is this is awesome. You know, I'll, I, want, I want me some, which I think is fantastic. And three, um, there's so many self-taught and in, uh, perfumers and indie houses that don't give 
anything, don't don't care about either, uh, that they, you know, they decided to go for it and actually use oak moss and actually use tree moss in the formula. So you they can use still buy oak moss. Absolutely you can. You just, if you use it in your perfumes, you cannot sell it in Europe. Europe. Mm -hmm. But you can sell it everywhere else in the world? Yeah. Is it just Europe? Yeah. So then there are American indie perfumers that are using oak moss. There are European perfume. indie perfumers who use oak moss, but they don't, they choose not to sell in Europe. Okay. Um, and if they have a registered firm somewhere else, they can actually get away with it. There are perfumeries elsewhere in the world that want to sell in Europe and have a, a registered trademark somewhere on the European territory and they have to comply. Or they don't have to comply, but they can't sell. They have, you know, they can gift, <laughs> gift so, them and sell elsewhere. So IFRA is part of European Union. So are all the European countries part of the e EU? So let's say, for example, no. Can you sell in Sweden? Are they part of EU? They are. Oh, which countries are not? So I guess if, if they're not, you can sell them in there, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty interesting. much. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like maybe uh, in so, Turkey. So Ifra, first of all, is, a, is an organization uh, to which you rally voluntarily. You don't. They don't mandate you to be part of Ifra. You don't have to be part of Ifra or uh, use their standard recommended standards for whatever you're making. It's not. It's not illegal to not follow IFRA. Let's let's just put it out there. It's not an exclusive club that you, somebody wants to be part of. You're not going to go to jail if you're not. You're not going to go to jail. Nothing's going to happen. Um, in fact, some perfumers use not being IFRA compliant as a selling point. Going, you know what? For the sake of creativity, because I had a vision and I needed to execute, I had to not. I, this is not it. And whoever wants to find my true self and my uh, creative colors <laughs> and see what I produced in my sleep after, you know, two days of being high on mushrooms, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you... Whatever high on they, Oakmas, okay? On my Oakmas, <laughs> whatever they, use, they choose to use to promote it, they actually almost brag about the fact that they're not for compliant because for them that provides, and I understandably so, more liberty when it comes to creativity. You have more ingredients to play with, then, you know, nothing is limiting you. Now, Oak Moss has been uh, regulated, like I said, since officially since 2014 by IFRA to be 0.1%. They said that Oak Moss can cause skin rashes and that's true. They can be really, really bad. They base, so in order to... Um, kind of justify this. They ordered a study, as many companies do, to prove that it is bad for you. So it was proven? <laughs> I want to know, I want to know. Here it comes. Everything, this is the disclaimer, everything you hear from me has been collected from um, personal declarations from people who work in the industry, from stuff that I was able to dig that some is not no longer available online, but some is still. Okay. Um, perfumers, uh, other um, international organizations, and all the reports written uh, by non-profit organizations. IFRA is an association, it's registered as a, a non-profit thing, but it's out there to make money. Um, the organizations that I trust and that I report to are the European Commission uh, Section for Public Health and Consumer Safety. Um, I can send you the link, you can share it with everybody, uh, because a lot of their studies are available and they also include um, some of the IFRA stuff okay. that they deem not valid. Okay. Uh, not. It's kind of like an OG Samson trial. It's because of the method that's wrong, not necessarily the results, but the method cannot be held in any scientific court as a viable method. If you measure using the wrong things and a wrong hypothesis, no matter if the answer happens to be correct, you can't use that as a as a as a scientific method of research. Anyway, okay. so what Ifra did was. We need to regulate this because, hey, somebody invented a vernil and we want to sell a vernil or whatever the reason was, okay, because it's not all about public safety. Uh, if it was, they would regulate other things like ESOA, which has mutagenic properties. You can use up to 21% of ESOA pure in a fragrance. Wow. Um, if you grow another head, hey. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, 
I, of course, I'm exaggerating and of course I'm stretching the truth, but I'm, I'm just giving examples of how the same methods are not used to measure this, you know, the same type of ingredients because the interests are different from one to the, to the other. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of things are ludicrous, like they're trying to limit citronol right now. So um, citronol, you can have... What's citronol? Like it's some kind of a citrus. Everything, every citrus has it, including like orange juice. Even in the juice, you can't regulate against citronol. Like there's no part. We're drinking it. I know, uh, but they're trying to regulate it because anyway, it doesn't matter why. Um, I think it's because uh, some of the labs that are part of IFRA as an association, as a union, basically, uh, keep inventing different chemical they elements, their... and they want their stuff to sell. I've always in thought about this. In order to sell, I've always thought about um, this. They have to regulate the usage and the uh, percentage of use for natural perfumery, so that IFRA can say from now on you can't use Kumar in more in more than whatever uh, percent, but. We have lab created Kumarin by our friend here. Uh -huh. Use that. It's the same. I've heard about this and I've thought about this. This is it's really, the same really as as uh, you know the pharmaceutical industry and doctors having specific contracts with specific makers. So they go, you can't use this aspirin because this is like over the counter aspirin. This is cheap aspirin. Use my aspirin because it's my aspirin expensive. is better and it's much more expensive. It's the same acetyl salicylic formula <laughs> and I can write it down. You know, it just really doesn't make any difference which one you use. It's kind of like salt, natrium and chloride. Yeah. You can only have one kind of okay. salt. Anyway, so um, this is what I think. Um, of course, I am nobody, um, but I have read all the studies. I have dug very, very deep um, so Ifra said, okay, we have a vernu, let's say. We have this chemical compound, so now let's regulate, <laughs> let's like regulate oak moss. What can we do to regulate oak moss? They looked everywhere in medical studies, medical cases, they found two cases in which two, two people had severe anaphylactic, like cardiorespiratory shock from this. Both cases were atypical. One of them was a nurse in a mental institution that was sprayed in the face repeatedly by one of the patients, oh which is not what you do in normal life. And the second one was a mother who did that to her baby, baby, suckling baby, sprayed the baby in the face repeatedly. Both these people had severe reactions. So then Ifra said, see, it can be deadly. Oh my God. Now let's enterprise a study to prove that it's unsafe. Um, the study was made, um, the committee was compound of people, mostly North Europeans, um, mostly Germans, a few Norwegians, a Sounds few very scammy. UK, so this is the, commi the commission. Wow. And they did tests on human volunteers and they said, look, if you spray somebody in the face a hundred times, they're going to have a reaction or whatever. Yeah. They never released the methods. They never publicized their results. Wow. And the European Commission talking about these regulations um, before they formulate their recommendations for the use of OGMOS say, we also tried to gain access to the IFRA studies that was denied. They were never published for their study enterprise in 1998. So IFRA never published the results of the study, wow. but they based their initiative on those two cases. And this is what I know from what I was able to dig. Now IFRA is huge. I'm sure I have no chance. If they want to come after my ass, they can. If they want to prove I'm wrong, absolutely they can. Wait, they'll they come can. after my ass. This is my channel. Your channel. They're going to come after my mother and my child and my, you know, like they can, sure. But this is what I think and this is what I found and this is what I'm relaying. And this is uh, the last time I read and found the these details was maybe like 10 months ago because I did a, a study on oak moss for my Romanian community. So this is what Ifra did. Then, based on that study that had no control group, all the volunteers were Northern Europeans of the same age, of the same stature, same type of oh skin, God. everything. Oh That's not God. representative oh for who God. buys sheep, right? But that was 20 years ago, so maybe they thought these are the you know rich people who buy perfumes. The rest of the world 
barbarians, they don't know Shepra, <laughs> we're not gonna study their effects, you know, we're only gonna study these people, and then they got whatever they want from it, and they regulated okay. uh, Okamas. That's a lot of information. By the Ifra. European Committee did their own studies, um, because Ifra keeps going at them, you know, hey, hey, now make it official, we're like this independent Wow. Make it official, make it official, take it out of law, take, make it official, make it official, lobby, right? So the European Com Committee did do their studies, there have been plenty of studies. The, they did it scientifically soundly. If you ask a scientist that does research, they're going to tell you that their methods are normal. Mm. They used a mixed group of mixed ages, mixed um, uh, genetic backgrounds, and they did a repeated study um, that showed the following. Um, if you spray, pu th they did several concentrations too. So um, if you spray a 0.6%, uh, which is six times what's now legal by IFRA, uh, no reaction. If you go 1.2%, um, out of two studies, each of them was like 50 volunteers, there was one reaction. Skin oh. reaction, which is nothing. If you go to 5%, you have like a 12% people find some sort of discomfort on the skin. But how much is in perfume anyway? But that's the thing. Um, There's not a lot. It, de it depends. It depends on the formula, but in perfume, you never put it directly on your skin, right? It's mixed with alcohol, mixed with other things. You put it on most, you know, oh, yeah. you you don't put it on your skin, you and know, then you put a patch. Your clothes put and it on just your everywhere. So the testing they did was to put it on localized on a, on the skin, mm. and then cover it, seal it. So the seal skin it? seal it for nine and twenty four hours. There are two different. What of the? course, I mean from soap, I get irritated if I put it on the skin for nine hours, right? Yeah. So. But they need to go through every single possibility to prove that, yes, indeed, some people are um, developing skin um, I mean, if, uh, if exposure they did eczemas. This, if they did this to Okmas, they're going to do it with everything. Well, they're not doing it with everything because Ephraim's not asking about everything. Well, they're you just said they're asking about the citrus, citrus something. Citrus. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're trying. So these were the results, right? At 5% um, out wow. of, there were 7 out of 53 people who developed some sort of rash, but I told you how. Put it on, they put it on the skin and then they covered it and kept it, you know, tied and not breathing. Why As don't they result, put it in a perfume? and wear that to test it, rather than just putting frickin' oak moss because on Because they can't associate with particular brands, particular formulas, and so on and so forth. It's just not feasible. You can't do it for everything out there. Just, it's not, it's not feasible. And then again, you know, in India, people use absolute t t distillation of oak moss. They mix it with turmeric, and they rub it on their skin. And what happens to them? Some people have reactions the same way you would have to, you know, some weird alcohol or some weird soap. But it's it's not in a higher percentage mm. than others. Then there was another study ordered in the UK where they found um, over the f last 17 years, people are getting more and more allergic to oak moss. Not that the reaction is more severe, but more and more people, number-wise. Okay. It goes up by 5% every year, which is consistent with other allergies. So it's not necessarily oak moss specific, it's just we're becoming more allergic in general. Now, I don't know what the UK people eat or don't eat, or who they measured it on, because there was not much detail. No, there was not much detail. So again, you don't know if it's representative for our entire community okay, of frag okay. heads. But that's an interesting thing. They also discovered that Norwegian people are way more reactive to oak, oak moss, percentage-wise, than the rest of the population. I don't know ex uh, why, again. When you, when you say reactive, are they like reacting negatively to it? Yeah, the, they get rashes. In a higher but percentage than But the Norwegians than like to go do foraging and eat all those foraged vegetables and, and plants. What the heck? <laughs> you know. Maybe repeat exposure, maybe, maybe it's more concentrated because the, the colder it is outside, the more intensity hmm. the tree has, you know, more, more concentrated, the tree sap usually, and that's what feeds the lichen, so maybe the lichen is more potent, who knows. Also, between the two, I said that there's um, an oak moss and a tree moss, they're both in the same category, the tree moss is more 
intense and causes more reaction. You know what? I'm getting a reaction right now with my hands just because we're talking about it. <laughs> Maybe it's all in their head. <laughs> Probably. I, I'm sure it's not, but you know, yeah. I'm just talking about the studies that I was able to, and I read them all, um, and I and I actually specialized in research methods and you know statistics and stuff like that. So some things are kind of like ringing some weird bells to me. I'm not saying it's all false. I'm not saying people are not reacting to it. I'm just saying the reason for which this was commanded and the way the method the, the method the the research has been conducted and transformed into valid results is is doesn't hold water for me um so i would go with the european commission um which at some point said okay if i get what you're trying to do how are you going to deal with this right are you just going to you know put a ban on okmos um so for a while there have been conversations about putting stuff on the paper, on the, you know, this is what it contained. Because IFRA and the European Committee came out with a list of 80-something dangerous ingredients, they said, okay, 86, if your fragrance has any of these 86, it has to be on the box. Then the perfumery said, well, I can't put my ingredients on the box. Maybe all of them are sensitive, but all of them are in the recommended percentages. So theoretically, it's safe to use. But if I put them all on the box, they're going to know my formula. Somebody's going to copy my perfume. And the solution to that was uh, they reduced the list to like 26 ingredients that have to be on the box if there's some natural material on mm. in the perfume and in order to evade the copiers and whatever you'll see that a lot of the perfumers put them with their latin names <laughs> that's why i said like if you see pronastri or furfurea know that it's oak moss or dream moss okay um so now they have to put them on the box which i think is the most common sense solution that's what the European Commission, um, the Public Health uh, and Consumer Safety Department recommends. This is not enough to take this ingredient off the market. Uh, we recommend putting it as an allergen, you know, I mean, notification. Yeah, they should do that. Like, if I mean, somebody's allergic to something, they're going to know what they're allergic to. And if they read the right, freaking box, they're going right. to say, okay, I don't want to use this product. Right. because Peanuts are being sold. Yeah. People die from peanuts yeah. left and right. Hello. You know what I mean? Where's Ifra regulating peanuts? Peanut butter. <laughs> so so that's that's what the European Commission is recommending. I think it's a very, very Europeans don't like peanut butter anyway. European don't like peanut butter. It's weird. It's weird. Eat peanuts. I love peanut butter. You can't open your mouth. You it's like a dog eating, I don't know, plastic. <laughs> you don't like peanut butter? No. <laughs> I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. You're it's too like, European. Well, I I I mean, I, I that was important here. It's like chewing on armpit deodorant. It's like weird consistency. Get a nice slice like... of bread, put some peanut butter on it, the chunky kind. Okay, so some texture. See, that's and what then, I'm saying. Because otherwise you like... Split a banana in half and slice it, pop it on top, drizzle <sighs> lots of honey on it. <laughs> that's my favorite. You got protein ruining, and you got, it's you're, vegan. You're ruining honey. Although honey is not vegan supposedly, but... Right, because it's made... From the bees who chew the yeah. nectar and the pollen and they spit it out that yeah okay so anyway it's not vegan. anything else about this freaking ifra oh my god there's way too much to talk about ifra but we want to get to the actual perfumes should we say something to wrap up the ifra issue and the oak moss issue look i mean, I, I think ifra has its own its its role in providing an infrastructure by some sort of you know direction to those who don't have one um i think uh, i don't want it to become mafia i think that creativity but to me it seems like it's mafia i feel like you see it in movies many times this one entity comes up and they regulate everything it's like pharmaceuticals yeah, it's, it's like, the it's same like thing you can't use this because we have these better things that right. are synthetic right. that are more expensive right. use those yeah that's what it feels like insulin was discovered and gifted as a patent because the guy who discovered it was romanian <laughs> <laughs> decided the can't i can't keep this to myself just let let the do you know how much insulin costs in america it's the same freaking chemical i'm not even gonna go into there but you know it's it's it, 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 sometimes the, the 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 purity of things creates paradoxes that are kind of hard to swallow for somebody who wants the creative part of life, who wants to enjoy the you know the artistic 
mission of what perfumery is. I do believe it's it's an artistic endeavor. It's not just practical. So I, I'm a little bit pissed, to be honest. I've talked about this before. I'm actually one of the very few vocal people about Ifra. I've taken a few, you know, hits because of it. Um, but I think, again, it has its role. Fine. And I, think, and I think creativity doesn't die. I mean, seriously, we have so many more ingredients to work with nowadays than we did like 40 years ago, 50 years ago, that I'm sure that whoever is truly creative and has a vision, they will be able to execute using whatever other um, methods they have to, um, you know, in hand, at, at, at hand, at hand. So what are some popular classic sheepras. I brought, I, I didn't know you were going to ask me this, but I always bring stuff. I you always did bring, bring stuff some to stuff. Him. So um, she's brought some... I brought a few uh, classic sheepras because I want to show them to you. Sheepra keeps really well, particularly the ones with a lot of oak moss, because like I said, oak moss, like ambergris for example, is a fix fixative. It fixates the formula so it doesn't really disintegrate or alter very much in time. Um, and except for the it, bergamot part, probably. The, except for the bergamot part, but if if it's a small part to begin with, then it's not it's not necessarily, you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't get worse. It just gets less. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas so some already, ingredients just go bad. You already mentioned bandit. Or I mentioned bandit. Um, Pigay, it's a leathery sheep. It's a leathery sheep. And, and a malic. On me, it gets animalic, yes. Uh, I've smelled it almost cold and smoky on others. Um, it's, I think, one of the fragrances that would be launched as masculine today, mm. um, for sure. Uh, even though there's a lot of competition in the harsh leather category, but this is not harsh, it's just very elegant, um, spunky, spunky? Um, okay. leather, bandit. Is, um, it, is it still good these days? I mean, is it still around? I think it's around, right? It's still around, yeah. Does it smell as good as it did before? Do you know? Or? I actually don't know what the, small, the, the new one smells like. I've always had... Look, you had a vintage. Vintage. Uh, and vintage is good because oak moss was used back then and now it's not. That's why everybody's like, Vin give me vintage, give me vintage. Also because you sometimes uh, want to see what the intention of the creator is. It's kind of like you know, we're, we're watching, we're listening to a singer who's now old and singing one of their biggest hits. It's not the same as it was when they first recorded it. Great explanation. It. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's absolutely. still them. Maybe they're even better they for other they things back then. because they're good at other things now. So for me, that's that's one of the things that I report back to when I, when I think of these. I want to see what the initial intent was mm -hmm. um, and if I like it, I'd like to stick with it. Um, That's very... why I don't like live music ever. I don't like live music either. I oh my god! Music. <laughs> you must be the only one other. I hate other live one. music. I Who knows? I'm like I don't get. It. I, I just give just... it to me. And it's original. And why are form. these weird people like you know doing this next to me? Let me enjoy. Yeah. Anyway, I need to understand got... it. What do you have here? So Fendi, huh? um, I want to show you a few because these have been long discontinued. They're relatively expensive, but if you dig in your aunt's closet, if you go to a flea market, if you, uh, whatever, go to Salvation Army and you see them in the window and uh, you know, they're $5.99 or whatever, buy Get them it. even for reference. You might not like it. It might be spoiled if they kept it in the window or something. But get it because it's it's good good, good research. Um, so this is the first one. This is um, uh, Fendi. This is the first uh, fragrance from Fendi. It comes in a squad bottle this as is well. During Karl Lagerfeld's time. Actually, I don't know. And Can I, you smell? I don't remember. Yes, this is. Oh, wow, that smells like a sheepra. Mm -hmm. A totally a sheepra. So I smell leather here. A little bit. Very little. This came out, and this is Armani, this is the first from Armani. You'll see that the top is very similar to this. It's theoretically made to have one of those pulverizers in the cap. Um, I replaced mine because I dropped it and, you know, went under the furniture somewhere as it happens. So I put another, just a sprayer bit tip does it work? on. Yeah, it does. Which one did I try earlier? This one or this? This is what you tried earlier. And this is this the, the one that you didn't try. Do you like this if you want? Can I spray? Yeah, of course. I have, t I have so much. Ooh, this one I like better than the other one. It's a little bit rounder. It's that greener. One is, yeah, but rounder. Do Oof, we know the perfumers good. behind these? I don't remember. 
And to be honest, it doesn't even matter at that age, you know? So both, so both of, those of those came out in the 70s? 70s. I think the Armani one came a little bit after and trying to copy this one, hmm. which is not necessarily bad. I like that Armani. And another one that is in the same category but slightly, slightly sweeter is from Gianfranco Ferre, which I think oh. used to make really nice... Really nice things back in the day. Um, Oops, I sprayed it without even asking you. Oh, wow. And this... Tuberose? A little bit, yeah. So this is leaning, leaning floral, and it's sitting, it's gonna sit back into sheep root. Very interesting. Wow. Right? Well, lots of tuberose on me. Very, very sensitive. Very. <laughs> very sensitive to tuberose. <laughs> So what's this one? This is so what I bottle. keep talking about to everybody I, who would listen. This is Maginois, which is a classic. I smell it on her all the time. It's a classic um, It chipre. smells so good. It's so green. What people don't know, so Maginois is still in production. You can find it in Sephora or whatever. I don't, I don't even know. Everywhere. It's not the same. Um, the alcohol based uh, from the 70s is monstrous and absolutely gorgeous but what people don't know is that at the same time they produce these things which are oil these are concentrated oils i think i made a video um this was uh, so they still sell this oil no no this is actually from the end of the 70s beginning of the 80s can i see and people assume that because it's oil it's gonna it will have gone rancid can't be further from the truth this is this is not going bad in it in, in fact i think it's getting I feel like oils better. are better than alcohol is what goes rancid. Right, but because because people see mm, oil, they I think love it's, that. it's phenomenal. I smelled it on you like several it, months it's ago. It's phenomenal because I transferred it in one of these small, you know, mm -hmm. baguette -y things. Those are good. That's really good. Everything smells. You talk about beast and you talk about projection and you talk about sillage and you talk about filling up a room. That stuff is amazing. Without pulling, gouging somebody's eyes out, without their balls falling, without their dog dying. You know, I think more people should look towards I want to find some vintages. of that. I want to find some of that. But I don't even know. Like, you said you don't know the comparison of the current version. Have you smelled the current version? There is no current version of oil. Well, well, the fragrance by itself. Oh. <laughs> Go stop on a Sephora and, and you tell me. Okay. Okay. I can decant some of this if you have. Because I, I got another bottle. I don't want to steal. I don't want to take your oil from you. I'm offering. Okay. If I you have a decant some. here. I do. Keep some. Okay. I got another bottle of this. All right. Cool. So what about some of the most modern sheepers that are very popular? Can you name a few? Like, I, I have a few. Well, um, I came here wearing Ship Ship Palatine. Palatine. Yeah, because I, I think it's brilliant. If anybody really likes me <laughs> and has a it bottle... Smelled great on her. No, 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 no. But if, if somebody really, really wants to participate in, in, in the, uh, you know, the advancement of <laughs> niche reviews... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if you have an old bottle of Chypre Palatine, the, the, the red juice one that you're not using, call this girl because I'm obsessed. Um, it smells great, guys. I've had a bottle of that one since 2015, 2016. I have the newer, awesome the, stuff. The, the more recent, I think, 2017 bottle, and I'm using it, and I love it. Um, but I think that's fantastic. I love Oriza Le Grand. Mm, um, Chypre Mousse. Chypre Mousse, I think. Amazing. It's, Phenomenal and it's such a good value for what it offers. I mean, there's so many. Um, and Bogue, you know, half of Bogue is sheep, the animalic sheep. Um, but then I have a soft spot for Gardoni, who never learned that I'm alive, but I still love him. <laughs> <laughs> what about Lestiage Blanc? Have you are you a fan, fan of that one? Yes, oh my god, yes. Is that there's the, so many actually? That's a leathery, like that's a leathery sheep, right? On me, it sits a little bit powder leather, which is very interesting because that's not what I expected from it. Um, oh, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, There's so many uh, out there. Um, uh, Eau du Soie, I think, is a very, very good one oh, from, from Sisley. Sisley. I think it's a fantastic one, and it has a sister called Soie de Lune, which smells like your exclusive, um, explosive but better quality. I think that's a, that's a gorgeous floral sheep. There's so many. I mean, so, so many. I mean, Kentsuji is a... <laughs> she, Mass she, Milano. So many, so many good sheep. I'm very happy to see how um, Nisha is doing today. Cool. How about you? You mean some of my favorites. We also forgot Olfactor Studio has sheep shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof, that that's sits. also Bertrand mm -hmm. de Chaffour. 
He knows what he's doing. What can I say? <laughs> the dude. He do, he also doesn't know I'm alive, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, they know you're alive. No, no. Uh, and it's better that way. Trust me. That's that's okay. that's, that's better that way. What what, what, what else? else? What else should we say about Shepras? We've covered so much. A lot of it on Ifra. You're gonna have to edit. I'm sorry for you. You're gonna there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of editing on this. Where I are we think... going? Where are we going with Shepra, by the way? Now that we have Ifra, they're regulating it. We are, uh, you know, we have that small amount of uh, Ultimus they could use. Where, where what, what do we see in Sheepers? Do you? One, you can see innovation like we did in Kitsuji, replacing the oak moss with something else and make it work. Um, or two, go anti Ifra and launch, you know, Shipsiam, um, like Rogue Perfumery did. Uh, do you like that one? Yeah. I think he's doing a really good job. Although from his line, I think Dervish was my favorite. I haven't, uh, I haven't finished testing everything like in detail. I like that detail. one too. Dervish was nice. I think it has a s like a ten minutes of one of the best jasmines I've s smelled in a long time, like midway through. But that's the full conversation. Um, I think yeah, either innovation or going completely classic, and against um, not against Tifra, but non. Ifra compliant uh, with formulas from perfumers around the world. I think uh, Prin Lomros is going to is is playing with the idea of Shepra. So either interpretation, or back to the basics and going full force on um, real oak moss. This is what I'm seeing, and this is what I'm liking. To be okay. honest, sounds good. Don't overdo it. She can literally make your eyes water. It's just not... <laughs> make your eyes water, huh? Makes it, make your eyes water because it's too strong. It is presence and, and don't make your perfume speak for you. Make it kind of hum in the background. You know, like uh, background vocals. Don't make it tell your story. You tell your story. If you have any, just tell. Because otherwise, if there's nothing here, the perfume's not going to do it for you. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And Shepra has this quality of being able to amplify whatever's there with the condition that something is there. Do I sound like I'm preaching? You Pre are preach! Girl, <laughs> this girl is preaching. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, I, think I love that, it. I think we covered a lot about Shepra. We all okay. know what Shepras are. Mm -hmm. Not named after the tree, but after the island. Mm -hmm. uh, we know it was... Started by Garlan, you said, not even Koti. Modern, yeah. Modern sheepers, but you said it was dating back to the 1700s when they first were using the style. Yeah, the accord has been uh, documented in the 1700s. It wasn't called sheeper back then, but the accord existed as something that is desirable and a good base to start a fragrance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's that's very telling. People have been, you know, using it and recognizing its value for a long time. So we have that. Um, they know that it's made of usually bergamot. It can be another uh, citrus. citrus, but usually bergamot, labdanum, which is a resin that smells slightly resiny, balsamic, uh, smoky, smoky um, maybe a little bit sweet, a little bit uh, beeswaxy. Um, and um, uh, oak moss. Our, our lovely friend oak moss. My lovely friend oak moss. <laughs> we know that Ifra is regulating oak moss. <laughs> making it. Bring Ifra. Bringing it to 0.1% perfumery. We know that some perfumers are going around that either by re. re uh, non Ifra compliant. Being non Ifra compliant or re creating uh, the accord with other ingredients instead of uh, the oak moss. They or, want to be Ifra compliant. Or by taking the allergenic parts, um, out. atranol and uh, chloratranol, out of the oak moss compounds. Um, that works too. Um, we know uh, Ifra. <laughs> I talked we definitely about... know Ifra. We know Ifra a I lot now. About, I talked about their studies. Uh, there's a lot to be said, but I think you have a lot of good people following me talking better things or more interesting things or other things <laughs> about oak moss um which i envy by the way i wish i could do the top 20. dahlia dahlia newman <laughs> dahlia is my newman newman uh, <laughs> <laughs> dahlia come, here she comes again with the top 20. Uh, anyway i think we've got it yeah yeah guys do you have any questions on sheep fragrances do you have a favorite sheep fragrance or is this the first time you learned about this particular style and 
from not knowing about it before and now that you've watched this video, do you think you'll like the idea of wearing a Sheepra fragrance? And the fact that some Sheepras were targeted, most Sheepras were targeted to women, would you like the idea of wearing some vintages that were specifically ladies targeted? Let us know. And also, if you have any questions or comments, put down uh, anything that you want, might want to know. And we want to do another video in the future, another nerdy long form video. Mm -hmm. Let's give them some options. And uh, you've been wanting to do vetiver. I love vetiver. Yeah. So that would be one. That's going to be very political. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, musk for two? Ooh, yes, musk um, for two and? How about throw in two, throw out two. No, why? Fruity, you said you like fruity. No fruity for you? No, we can do fruity. You said you like fruity fragrances. No, I said I don't like fruity fragrances, but I'm down. And the number four, In the name fig. of science. Oh. No, she does not like fig. Wait. No, she likes fig, fig fruit. or fig leaf. They're she not the same. She don't like fig leaf. No, I don't like how you talk about fig leaf and you call it fig instead of calling it fig leaf. Okay, I'm talking about fig leaf. Okay, fine. Okay, fig so leaf. Better her. Musk. Musk. Fig leaf. Fig leaf. Fruity fragrances. Okay. Which would you want us to cover next? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for doing this video with me. This is the longest video we've done. Tell these people. My name is Dana. Th well, this, I create uh, content. She's Dana. And uh, we are going to put a link down for her Instagram <laughs> account. Instagram, yeah. It's a nose Better. nose. <coughs> and if you want to watch more videos with the two of us, I do have a playlist on the channel featuring Dana. Mm -hmm. The lovely Dana. Nerd life, full life. <laughs> I will link the uh, the previous video about resins and balsams in uh -huh. the info box. You can watch that and then find the playlist and then watch the rest of our videos together. If you have any questions or comments, like I said, please put it down below. Otherwise, please like, oh, go follow her, as I said, on her Instagram account. Otherwise, <laughs> please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.